Good morning. Before we begin today's Mass, we will be reciting the prayer, Living Our Faith, Building Our Future. Almighty God, throughout the ages, you have moved your faithful people to build houses of prayer and praise, setting apart a sanctuary for the ministry of the Word and Sacrament. Guided by the gift of your eternal wisdom, grant that our undertaking of the construction of Holy Trinity Catholic Church be for your glory and for our own spiritual well-being. And by your grace, may it progress day by day to its successful completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to this celebration of the Mass of the fifth Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We wish a happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers here and afar. Uh, recognizing that we always need God's help to follow him in his ways, we call to mind the need for mercy for the times where we have not followed him. You are sent to heal the contrary of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, 
that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen, amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, and so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nican Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a con convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large number of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying, laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that, has, that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make, pe will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of its own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Lay my mind on my lips and in my heart. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still not and still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? and the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Well, happy Mother's Day to all of our moms and grandmas and mothers to be and um you know thinking about being a mother um you know i, n I never will be obviously <laughs> so it's just uh, a reflection from a distance although a close distance for my mom held held me close to her heart and i'm grateful for that and um 
and we, where would the world be without mothers, without women? Um, it wouldn't be. So I think we all can have a reflection upon uh, motherhood and its impact on us, and, and some are very blessed to experience it firsthand as a mother. Um, you think about being a mom, I mean, they prepare a place for us in this world. You know, our moms prepared a place for us in this world. And um, they opened up their hearts to us. They held us inside of them for, for months as we grew. They, they fed us from their own life. And, um, and they paved the way for the rest of our lives uh, in some way, fashion, or means. They prepare you know, the room for us when we go home from the hospital. Maybe the crib, you know, they and dad put it together, or um, maybe grandpa. And then, you know, they, they prepare the diapers and the clothes, and it's, I don't know if we call it nesting. I heard that term, but that sounds not, not suitable for humans. Um, but there's this, there's this preparation of love to receive children. Um, pretty beautiful. And... And we recognize that there, there are griefs um, associated with motherhood, uh, especially if a, one finds it difficult to become a mother or is unable to, or, or there's some sort of separation between mother and child, uh, whether by illness or death, or, or maybe life circumstances get really tough and the mom isn't able to be there. Uh, and those are really hard things. And for us children, you know, going, if we were to go through that or have been through that uncertainty, you know, our hearts might be troubled. And that's okay. Jesus receives you. Did, did you hear that in the gospel? He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. Jesus doesn't say, hey, go away if you have a troubled heart. Go fix yourself before you can come talk to me. He doesn't say that. He engages the disciples. He engages you in your grief, in your troubled heart. No matter the source of that trouble. And he invites you into a relationship of faith. You have faith in God have faith also in me. Because like a mother, Jesus prepares a place for us. He says, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? There's a lot of uncertainties these days with the pandemic and the precautions in response to the pandemic. Things that we never would have probably thought about, like what about the wedding? What about graduation? What about that trip we wanted to take? What about that elective surgery we wanted? What about going to visit so-and-so? What about my investments? What about my job? <laughs> you know. All these things, uncertain, and they've always, in a way, been uncertain. It's just we never thought about it. But what is certain is that God has a place for you. That is certain. And it's unique where he says we have many places, many dwelling places. And why? Because we all want to be separated? No. <laughs> wow. Well, some of us in our homes might want a little quiet time from the rest. But perhaps the way to look at it is, is that there is a place of love meant for every single person, many dwelling places. And those places of love are unique because they are relationships between a unique individual such as yourself, and between God's unrepeatable love. So there are many places. As, as many of individuals there are, God wills and desires there as the same number of places. 
and being all with God, we're all together. As we heard in that second reading, we're all parts of the building. <laughs> we're in communion with one another. And, and so, how do we get there? Didn't Philip ask that? Don't you ask that? Oh, there's peace, but how do I get it? And I want, you know, and I want it now. Like, I believe, Lord, but how? How do I have that? Well, so then Jesus gives us this really great answer where he goes step by step of how you do it and don't do this, don't do that, and do it in this order at this time. And, and it's, like a, uh, it's like a recipe, right? He just, no, he doesn't do it. <laughs> you know what he says? He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Ah, there you go. Done. Oh, thanks, Lord. That was really nice. I wish I had a, <laughs> you know, I can do that. What do you mean? You are the way, the truth, and the life? Uh, that's so vague. But here's the beautiful thing about it, is if the way of receiving God's love is letting go and trusting he wants us to trust him more than an instruction list. And so he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Is that we simply seek him and his life and let that life flow out of us, the life of virtue, the life of grace. And even though we can't receive sacramental communion as much as we would like, he's still giving himself in spiritual communion so that the life of grace can come out of us just naturally. Yeah, and if you do want the, the, the sides of the bridge so you don't go off the bridge, well, that's the commandments. It's the life of virtue. It's avoiding the vices, okay? But the roadway is the life of Jesus. So simple today. Do you want to have peace in the uncertainties? Your peace is in Jesus. And in Jesus, you find the Father's love. <laughs> I invite you to sit with that, to pray with that. My peace is in Jesus. And in Jesus, I rest in the Father's love. My peace is in Jesus. And in Jesus, I rest in the Father's love. Well, together we stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. As people called by God a chosen race, a royal priesthood, let us present our needs to him with confidence. For all of us baptized into Christ's church and the royal priesthood, may the Lord continue to increase our faith for the sake of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in positions of authority, may God's grace enable them to lead with integrity, protecting life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that affects our world, that God will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to preserve, persevere in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For prisoners, for persons incarcerated wrongly, and for political prisoners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our desire to restore holy reverence before the most precious gift of your most holy body and blood instill in us a more fervent love and perpetual adoration of your real presence in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Holy Trinity Parish, that we may be guided by your divine providence in building a new sanctuary for the praise and glory of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Dennis Rahan and Richard Berry, may he who has prepared a place for them Welcome them to the splendor of their heavenly home. And for the intention of this Mass, Mary and Jean Stein and Pete Van Kirk, Daryl Bender, and our parish family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together we offer our vocations prayer. God our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your Spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious as we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of His holy church. 
O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in the sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment. In the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you but for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, 
grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pil pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Walker our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May the smoke of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring you to God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May your Savior, the body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring you to judgment and condemnation, but through your love and mercy, be for me protection of mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
shepherd of Israel, lend an ear. You who guide Joseph like a flock, you brought the vine out of Egypt. You drove out nations and planted it. I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, there's fruit in plenty. Son of man, whom you made strong for yourself, then we will not withdraw from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. I am the true. I invite you to make your own prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's see here. Well, today we have a special blessing for all of our mothers, wherever they may be, and we especially also remember our mothers who've already passed from this world into the Father's hands. And so, mothers, I ask you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I just want to wish all of our mothers a good weekend, a happy Mother's Day. And um, also, uh, it looks like a beautiful day. 
you know, as it is in the bulletin, if you want your confession heard, um, receive the sacrament of reconciliation, you can call and make an appointment or email Monsignor or I uh, to make an appointment for that. And we're very happy to accommodate um, uh, your hours or, or when you can meet best we can. And um, also on, on Wednesday for our kids, we're gonna have a, uh, a kids mass um, at 1030 on Facebook Live here at St. Ed, or well, Facebook Live on the parish, but it's right here in this chapel. Um, but it's a parish Facebook Live page. And so uh, 1030 Wednesday, which is our Faith Formation Day, and also, um, of course, uh, the St. Edmund kids would have been in school as well. So um, that's about it. I hope you have a great day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The friends and families of Holy Trinity Catholic Parish, thank you for joining us this Sunday morning. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass can be heard each Sunday on KVFD 1400 at 8.30 a.m.